All right, music fans, welcome back. Harmless Dave here talking real music in real time for a few real people out there uh, just like you and just like me. This is a music-related episode. Um, Before I get going with that, I've got the Chris O'Leary Band. I've been sharing this. This is really good music. You don't have to listen to this particular album, but anything by Chris O'Leary, and he has a new album coming out, I believe, early next year. So be on the lookout for that. Great soulful singer, great bluesy band, and um, just very eclectic and somewhat uh, unpredictable, musically speaking. And I really like it. Um, Also, I'm a big fan of Modern Retro Radio, too. ModernRetroFM.com. Playing the music that corporate radio refuses to touch. That's all I can say about that. Um, you got to go check it out, modernretrofm.com. Now, Tom Morello, uh, he's the guy in Rage Against the Machine, and admittedly, I know nothing about the band. Admittedly. I'm just putting it out there. All I know is that Ted Nugent at one point said they weren't raging against anything. That's what he said. And um, they got into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame over the weekend. Because they deserve to be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame over the Guess Who or Steppenwolf or Dan Fogelberg. Do they do they deserve to be in the Hall of Fame over Dan Fogelberg? Was it maybe the fact that they sing about certain things and they appeal to youth culture, Dave? Dan Fogelberg, he appeals to old Fogelbergies or Fogies or whatever. Um, Well, at one point back in, what, the 1970s, we weren't all old fogies and neither was Dan Fogelberg. But I digress, right? Let's digress back to why uh, Tom Morello and his uh, sacred band is in the hallowed Hall of Fame. Um, So he gave this speech. He thanked his wife and children, which is interesting that he has a wife and children. I'm wondering what his his kids are probably all being raised to be. Um, well, l- let me get to the the punchline here. He thanked the A and R guy who signed the band to Epic Records. <laughs> we just love that. Um, most of these guys typically end up hating A and R guys because they don't do half the stuff that they should do. You know, they get the thing started and then they walk away from it, and then when you complain about it. They go, ah, I got your record deal, didn't I? Um, He says this, what I hear in the music is this, that the world is not going to change itself, but throughout history, those who have changed the world in progressive, radical, or even revolutionary ways did not have any more money, power, courage, intelligence, or creativity than anyone watching tonight. The world's changed by average, everyday, ordinary people who have had enough and are willing to stand up for a country and a planet that is, now listen to this, that is more humane, peaceful, and just. Remember, humane, peaceful, and just. And that is what I'm here to celebrate tonight. Now, a little bit later on in the speech, he just said peaceful, humane, peaceful, and just. He says, rage is not here, but you are. Rage meaning maybe because the band wasn't actually there. I'm not sure. Um, It's kind of a weird sentence here. The job we set out to do is not over. Now you're the ones that must testify. Notice the religious language there. Um, You have to testify. We're passing the baton. Rage Against the Machine is passing the baton to you, to me, to everybody. And this is his advice. Now remember... A little while back, he said to um, to be peaceful, or he wants a peaceful and just world. He says, if you've got a boss, join a union. Okay, that's good advice for 1985. Uh, if you're a student, start an underground paper, like a newspaper. Um, I think that's a little outdated. Uh, now, here's the one that might cause a little consternation here. If you're an anarchist, throw a brick, all right? Maybe you need to throw a brick through the window of a black-owned business, because that 
worked wonders back in 2020. He goes on, if you're a soldier or a cop, follow your conscience, not your orders. Well, um, pretty much if I get a job doing anything in the world, right, and I'm not doing what they're telling me to do, I'm going to get fired. <laughs> it's just, that's, it's really that simple there, Tom. So if you're a soldier or a cop, don't follow your orders, follow your conscience. Because uh, you know better than what they're telling you to do. Now, there are times when authority figures can become abusive and get high on their own power. What do you think they're doing at that point? I would say they're following their conscience and not their orders. Anyway, in conclusion, Morello said, it's time to change the world, brothers and sisters, or as a bare minimum to stir up a poop load of trouble. I substituted a word there. I kind of enjoy the, the word poop load. Sounds cool. Um, so yeah, that's it. Great advice from Tom Morello, who basically earlier in his little speech said that uh, we should have a, a, a more humane, peaceful, and just world. And then later on encouraged um, people to throw a brick. So I'm not sure how throwing a brick is more peaceful and just. And this is talking out of both sides. And I'm going to hear, oh, you don't understand what he's saying. You're misinterpreting. He's not saying to hurt anybody. No, to destroy businesses and to destroy property does hurt people. And who's to say a brick might not land on a person? This is ridiculous. And do we need more violence at this time? We've got countries fighting countries, and we've got people dug in as if it's their war. Like, is the war in the Middle East, is, is that your war? It's their war. It's not my war. I'm, I didn't start that war. I'm not involved in that war. I may believe one side is more justified in doing what they're doing than the other side, but people are personalizing this war and ingesting it rather than, again, pursuing something noble and good and decent. You know, he says here to testify. It's your turn to test. Your turn to testify. Well, what are you testifying for? You're testifying for just, you know, uh, overturning the norms that we've had in our world, in our society. That seems to be the goal of Rage Against the Machine. But they weren't there for people who were questioning the narrative during the thing-demic. Uh, they weren't there for those people. In fact, uh, they told those people to get in line. Don't follow your conscience. See? But he says here to follow your conscience and not your orders. <laughs> That's funny because uh, the little emperor doctor there, the little troll Fauci, he gave out orders, and people followed those orders. They didn't question. And if you did, uh, you, you came under, you know, the scrutiny and the wrath and the um, critique of a guy like Tom Morello. And there are others, obviously, but see where all the, the hypocrisy is here? It's everywhere. This isn't the rock and roll of the late 60s, early 70s. This isn't that anymore. This is something very different. It's part authoritarian. And then it tells you, again, to go against authority, but at other times it tells you to obey authority right and when we need law and order it's basically telling the soldier or the cop to stand down because you're getting bad advice from those people at the top if you have a job make sure you give the employer some some grief by joining a union and protesting your $25 an hour wage so you can get $35 an hour and you can get a four day work week and you get a pension, you know, when it all pays out worth over a million dollars and people wonder um, why things cost so much money. Also, I notice here how he never talked about anything truly rebellious, like, say, ending the Federal Reserve Bank and the government, which is out of control and the border, which is out of control because some anarchy is okay for these people, so long as it doesn't affect them. I'm sure Tom lives in a really nice house with a really good security system, all right? That would be my guess. 
So in any event, folks, uh, for the rest of us out here, the working class, uh, we've got music like this to listen to, not raging against the machine or anything. This guy here stands up for our veterans, for people who have fought and who have gotten hurt and are not getting the help that they need. Chris O'Leary, he's a veteran himself, so he knows. He, like, actually knows. He's actually done something with his life, and uh, now he's making great music, and he's been doing it now, I believe, for over a decade. So, again, check out the Chris O'Leary Band. That's real music as far as I'm concerned, whereas Rage Against the Machine, to quote the great Ted Nugent, isn't raging against anything. 